So today we will discuss about the various types of the annealing. So this is the diffusion annealing. So this is also known as homogenization annealing. So it is applicable for high carbon steel and high alloy steel with the carbon percentage ranging from the 0.6 to 2%. The objective of this uh, diffusion annealing is to remove the structural non-uniformity. That is uh, if uh, uh, there will be the crowding of the carbon that is a rich region carbon gets dissolved or diffused into the poor region and non-uniformity can be removed. The diffusion annealing process includes heating that is the above ACM line. So it will be the 1000 to 1200 degrees Celsius temperature. Then holding at the temperature for 10 to 20 hours for time period. Then cooling process is the air cooling that is a slow cooling. So in diffusion annealing, heating to such high temperature lead to the grain coarsening and hence it is always followed by another heat treatment or plastic deformation for plastic deformation. So hypoeutectoid and eutectoid steel casting are given annealing and hypereutectoid steels are normalized or partially annealed. So high temperature holding times and slow cooling rates of second heat treatment makes the process highly expensive. Next one is a spherodizing annealing. So it is applicable for steel with the carbon percent 0.6 to 1.2% and alloy steel. The objective of spherodized annealing is improve machinability and ductility. So the microstructure shows the globules of cementite particles in the matrix of ferrite. Uh, methods of producing spherodized structure, so hardening and high temperature temping, then holding for long time below A1 temperature, then thermal cycling around the A1 temperature. A very core structure is to be preheated to make it fine before spherodizing to easy spherodizing. So this diagram shows the typical heat treatment cycle to produce the spherodized structure. So here the steel is heated at the A1 temperature. Then some mechanical treatment is provided for the hardening and tempering temperature. Next is a partial annealing. It is also called as a intercritical annealing or incomplete annealing. So applicable for low and medium carbon steel. The objective of partial annealing is it improves the machinability. So partial annealing includes the process heating that is a hypoeutectoid steel between A1 and A3 temperature hyper steel between A1 and ACM temperature. The second step is a holding that is a hold at the temperature for a definite period of the time. Then next step in a partial annealing process is the cooling that is a slow cooling in air. So the resultant microstructure consists of fine perlite and cemented structure. It is less expensive than the full annealing because of low temperature involved. Next is a subcritical annealing. So it is applicable for steel with a percentage of carbon less than 0.0%. That is a low carbon steel. The objective of subcritical annealing is to relieve the internal stresses, reduce the hardness, modify the grain size. Then the types are stress relieving annealing. The process includes heating the steel at 500 to 550 degrees Celsius temperature with the recrystallization temperature 600 degrees Celsius for steel with percentage of carbon less than 0.4. Then holding at the temperature one to two hours, then cooling with the help of air 
is the last step in the stress relieving annealing. So in this stress relieving subcritical annealing, internal stresses are partly relie relieved without loss of strength and hardness, that is without change in microstructure. Then it reduces the risk of distortion in machining and increases the corrosion resistance. Then subcritical annealing. Next one is a recrystallization annealing. The process includes heating of the steel at 725 to 675 degrees Celsius temperature above recrystallization temperature. Then next process a step in the process is a holding at that temperature for a definite period of the time. Then next process of recrystallization annealing is the cooling that will be the air cooling that is a normalizing. So ferrite recrystallizes and cementite tries to spheroidize. Internal stresses are relieved and steel becomes soft and ductile in nature. Next is a process annealing that is intermediate annealing. So it includes the process same as the recrystallization annealing except that it is an intermediate process. It is used to soften the metal during the mechanical processing so as to continue the cold working process without cracking. Next is the normalizing the applicable for the steel with the percentage of carbon 0 to 2 percent. The objective of normalizing is to eliminate coarse grain structure obtained during the forging, rolling and stamping. Then normalizing improves the machinability of hypo eutectoid steel it uh, reduces the internal stresses. Uh, it increases the homogeneity of structure. So the normalizing process includes heating of the hypoeutectoid steel with the A3 plus 50 degrees Celsius temperature. That is a 910 and uh, 50 degrees Celsius temperature. And hypoeutectoid steel that is ACM plus 50 degrees Celsius temperature. The next step includes in the process of normalizing is the holding that is the hold at that temperature, this temperature for a definite period of the time. The next step in the process of normalizing is the cooling. So air cooling is provided that is called as a normalizing. So it is a slightly faster than the furnace cooling. So furnace cooling is a slow cooling by switch up in the furnace that is called as analyzing annealing. And if it is a slightly cooling rate is a slight faster then it will be called as air cooling or normalizing. Then comparison between annealing versus normalizing. So annealed component and normalized process or anneal process. So it will provide the less hardness, tensile strength and toughness. Normalizer provide slightly more hardness, tensile strength and toughness. Then for annealed perlite is coarse and usually gets resulted into the optical microscope. In normalized perlite is fine and usually appears unresolved with optical microscope. Then annealed grain size distribution is more uniform and in normalized grain size distribution is slightly less uniform. Then for annealing internal stresses are least and for normalized internal stresses are slightly more. So this is the comparison of annealing and normalizing heat treatment process. So here in annealing furnace cooling is there and for normalizing air cooling is there. 